around here, this is where I'm going to get it from. This is important because many times we're trying to reap from some other area. If I sow seed in New Mexico, I expect to reap something out of Mexico. If I sow seed in Ukrainian Crosby, I expect to, sow, to, to reap something back from those areas. Wherever I'm sowing is where it's coming back at me. Amen. What I sow is what I reap. If I sow hate, I get hate. I sow love, I get love. In this town over the last week, some people sowed hate. When they sowed hate, they got hate. If you sow love, you're going to get love. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. It's just that simple. It's not, a, it's not a hard formula. You say, well, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I, I don't know what's going to go wrong. Well, you're spitting icicles all the time. You're like hugging a porcupine. Every time somebody gets near you, you cringe and back up, and you wonder why. There it goes again. You wonder why. Amen, that, that there's problems. You, you've got to be able to be embraced, and you've got to embrace. How I sow is how I reap. I love Luke chapter 6 out of the Message Bible. Don't pick on people. Jump on their failures. Criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. In other words, if I sow picking, if I sow jumping, if I criticize people, of course, it's going to come back to you. I, I remember my friends in high school, and I remember the bullies. I remember their names. I'm not going to mention it because I know we're online. But, and I have mentioned it before, so it's back in history of my preaching from somewhere. But I had a bullet that picked on me all through high school, through junior high, into high school. And, 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 I, and he did it because of what? He was insecure. Bullies are insecure. And they look, they hunt for weaker people to beat up on to make themselves look bigger. If you've got to tear somebody down in order, that makes you lower than... than. So... He picked, and he picked, and he picked. The problem was, I wore hand-me-down clothes. Hand-me-down, Natalia, is exactly what I'm saying. Hand-me-down. You know, if you've got older siblings, it comes down to you. You get that clothes. I had a, a friend down the road named Randy who had clothes that I could wear when he outgrew them. And when I got his clothes, because we were unable to afford nice clothes, Randy was a, in a single family, and he was the only child, and he got nice clothes. And every time he ha got done with them, he would hand them down to me. That made me look good. So I was wearing one of his hand-me-down shirts. It was P.E. I'm wearing shorts, and I, I kept the shirt on. I liked it so much. And this guy came up behind me and shoved me, and I heard the shirt tear. And when that shirt tore, when I hit the ground, I lost all presence of mind. H, I jumped up and I punched him. I knocked him to the ground. I wasn't a believer then. You know us believers are not going to do this stuff. I put him on the ground. After I got him on the ground, I jumped on top of him. My daddy told me, if you ever get him down, never let him up. I got on top. I started waylaying him. Boy, I was jacked. He boom, boom. I was beating on that guy. Hey, man, and they pulled me off. Well, give me, give, give me, give me, give me. So he, he started crying and run off. After I beat that boy, that bully, every girl in that school whooped him. Because <laughs> the word was, if Hovada can whoop you, anybody can whoop you. Are you hearing me? He sold picking. He sold meanness. It came back on him. Be honest with you. I don't remember the... the for the rest of the years of school, we all forgot about him. He was nebulous. He was, it was over with after that moment. Unless you wanted to come back. You don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. You sow condemnation, it comes back to you. You know why some people are blessed? Because they've always been a blessing. Why do some people get mercy? Because they've always sowed mercy. They've been kind toward others, and whenever they've had failures or, or stumbled in their life, it came back to them in the same way. Be easy on people. You'll find life a whole lot easier. Can I get an amen? Move to the next thing. Give away your life. You'll find your life given back. But not merely giving back. Giving back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting is the way generosity begets generosity. The problem with, uh, is not with us, but you've got to hear me. I, I, I literally have this, this theology in my mind that this, is, this word is so important to give away your life. To stand on the corner to give away your life as they're doing in the... Pro to, to not be... To not to hold on to your life so tightly. Many of us are so afraid, boy, this is touchy, of dying. But Scripture says in dying we live. 
And it's the one thing I already know is that we're all terminal. We all got an expiration date. We got to live life. We got to be salt. We got to be light. We got to be kind. We got to be loved. We got to be all these things. But eventually, these lives are over. So I live in such a way. I don't try. If, if, if whenever God decides it's, it's good with it's, it's, <laughs> so I say, well, it's good with me. How many know you may not get a vote? You may not get a vote. Maybe the best thing you can hope for, is, again, is a heads up. Just give me about 30 seconds, God. Let me know before it happens. But eventually in life, we hold on to it. The Scripture says, I give away my life. If I love, if I release, if I let go, it's going to come back to me. Generosity begots generosity. I read this, and I thought, boy, this is important. If you lend a knothead $20, everybody know what a knothead is. And you never see that person again, it was probably a good investment. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, are you comfortable? Now we have to message. My goodness, my time's already up. Well, don't you know that? I, don't you love being here in the first service knowing I got to shut up before 10? <laughs> you may have to come out to the second service to get dressed this. So in warp speed, here we go. Brothers, I could not address you spiritual. Paul speaking to the church of Corinth. But worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready. First off, milk is important to a baby. You've got to give them milk. When people get born again, the, the job of a pastor is this, three steps forward, two steps back. I know some of you have said this. I've heard that sermon before. I've heard that story before. What you forget is enjoy that, enjoy your peas and carrots. We'll get you to some steak later. But right now, there are people in the room that need some peas and carrots because they're just new believers, right? So you go three steps forward, and then you take two steps back. You've progressed one step. Over 26 years of pastoring, I've lived three steps forward and two steps back trying to bring it. Because once you get some, some folks someplace, here come new folk. And you got to help folk progress. So you got to give them a little meat, but you also got to deal with the peas and the carrots. Can I get an Amen. So he said, I've been this way. He said, I, but you're still not ready. You're still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you're sowing jealousy and quarreling. Are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? For when one of you says, I follow Paul, and the other says, I follow Apollos, one says, I follow T.D. Jakes, and another one says, I follow Joel Osteen. When another says, I follow this one and I follow that one. Amen. Are you, are you not just mere men? What if after all is Apollos, as he's a guy. What is Paul? He's just a guy. They're only servants with whom you came to believe. They were the ones that talked to you first and you connected to God through them. As the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. When I bring people into this church to preach, I do it so they'll water what I've already said. And I'll hear people go out here and go, I ain't never heard that before in my life. I can't get no help over here. I, I, I never heard that before in my life. That's a little Rick Hawkins for you right there. I never heard. And I've been saying it to you for 20 years. So one of them planted seed. I planted seed. But one, another one came in and he watered. But God, everybody say, but God, made it grow. It was God that made the seed grow. It wasn't Rick, it wasn't Jerry, it wasn't Fred, it wasn't a stare. Amen. It was God that made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. You can stand on the street corner all day and, and, and encourage people not to, but it's God that helps get them children back into the kingdom of God. And you realize this over and over. It's God that does this thing. I, I told David this week, one of the problems I've got about summers, and it's not just summers, but sometimes we're together too much. Our staff's together. We work together. We sweat together. We stay at things together. And then people, then all of a sudden, the more you're together, I get now see start yang yang each other. And I looked at him this week. I said, you know what my problems is? I got to get back to fishing. I got to get back to going after people. I got to quit looking at all the things around here and go after people. Amen. My life is about fishing. This Friday night, I'm going to just go ahead and mention it to you. We're going over to Valley Ranch in Kroger's 
parking lot in New Caney. They got a big car show there every week. I went there this week. A lot of people know us because of our muscle car Sunday. And I thought, well, I got to get my car over here. You got to get your car, your hot rod. If you got a hot rod, or even if you don't, I'd love to have you over that 6 o'clock Friday night. I'm going fishing. Right. Amen. I, we, we, I brought some folk with me, and I walked away, and they were over there still fishing. She, and the girl come to me, she said, Pastor, they're going to be in church on Sunday. You watch this. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen in the next service. Because I see this happening over. We got to get back out in the world. We got to get back out where we can connect. Where was I here? It's God. Only God can make things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each one will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. I love how the scriptures, it's a field to plant and to plow in, to plow and to plant in. It's a building to raise and to build. By the grace that God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. Let me just mention just a little bit about that. I have built and started churches, and there are other people building on it. That's between them and God. I leave it alone. Amen. I'm just glad I got something started. Some of y'all better getting things started than you are at finishing it. I'd like to finish it. I'd like to stay with it till it's finished. Father, thank you for the word. It, God, it helped my voice to be able to handle what was, uh, what's ahead. Give me just a few minutes. Stop the clock in Jesus' name. Remember what's it? Amen. Amen. Be seated. Let me give you some principles. Everybody say, go to the principal's office. I guess that's where we're at right now. First, increase comes from investment. This is a principle. You need to write it down. Increase comes from investment. Investment means to spend or devote for an advantage or benefit. To devote morally or psychologically as to a purpose. Proverbs eleven twenty four says this. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Understand this about the Scripture. I believe it to be wholly true. It's the principle on which we live. That if I learn how to invest, if I learn how to bless others, it's going to come back to me. It's amazing to me how some people will look at other people and say, I can't believe that they keep being not so blessed. You know why they're blessed? Because they give. They invest in other people's life. Now look at this here too. If you refresh people, you'll be refreshed. I can only bless you with the refreshing that I've gone through in life. And when I refresh others... When I have an opportunity to talk, to be around others, to pour into their lives, it refreshes you and vice versa. If you want to be refreshed, find somebody who's dry and talk into their life. Amen. Do something for them. Proverbs eleven twenty four in the Message Bible says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You want to hold on, hold on, hold on? Your life just gets smaller. But learning how to let go. It, it, again, it's been two years since that, that hurricane. And, to, and every, everything just seemed like you lose it all. And then I look around and I say, dear Lord, look at all this stuff. And now i got to figure out how to get rid of more stuff. Amen. Because if God give it to you, he's going to give you a way to be a blessing to others. And don't give you a reason just to hang out with me thinking I'm going to give you something. Amen. God will tell me who to give it to. I, I, I'm looking for folk to bless. Amen. And to keep doing it too. Second principle, increase rises through faith. If I have faith, increase comes. Acts 16, 4. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees, the word of God, for them to keep principles. They were giving principles out that they were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, increased in numbers daily. They were solidified in their persuasion and conviction. They increased. They, they superabound. They, abundance came to them to have access. The early church grew because of faith. One of the things that we forget is that we live by faith. There are times you see things and your eyes are lied to you. I said your eyes are lied to you. We live by faith and not by sight. I've got to believe God for my future, for my children, for my children's children, for this church. I got, when I go to the hospital and pray for people, I've got to believe God, God going to raise them. That they still got a future. They still, and you say, well, it looks like the doctors, the doctors have to do what the doctors do. They live by sight. They have no choice. It's their job. But when you walk in, you've got to live by faith. You've got to see yourself in your future. You've got to see yourself getting better. You've got to see. You say, well, Pastor, all the shooting over here and all the shooting over there. There's 7 million. 7 million? Is that how many we got in America? Yeah. Huh? Come on. Man, where have I been? That's right, there's four million in Houston. Duh. I only count I only count Texas, my bad. 
300 million, that's right. There's 300 million in, in, in America. So what we're looking at is such a small percentage when, when catastrophes happen, but we're focused on. This is the thing that always bothered me, J.C., that, that, uh, that thousands and thousands of babies aborted our statistic. And when it comes to stats, stats just kind of are nebulous to us. But if you can get put a name on it, that's why these tragedies are so bad in El Paso and in Dayton because they're going to have names on them. That's why the church shooting a couple of years ago in South San Antonio was so bad because it had names on it. But we forget the thousands and thousands of people around the world every day that are leaving the earth. Amen. Because they're stats. They're stats. But when you put a name on it, increase follows effort. I got to move fast. Increase follows effort. Everybody say effort. Effort. You got to do something. Well, I'm just going to sit right here and watch God bless me. It don't work that way. You got to work. You got to get at it. You got to keep moving. You got, well, I'm retired. Good. We can use you. Amen. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Pastor, why does it seem like every time people retire, they come out and work at the ranch and then they die? I said, because they were going to die anyway. And they got something done and lived some purpose in their life before they left here. Amen. Amen. Don't give me that. We did it. We didn't kill them. We have given them uh, a cha-ching in heaven. Amen. We have to find something to do. Wealth gotten by vanity shall diminish, but he that gathered by labor shall increase. The New International Version says dishonest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money little by little grows it. Little by little, little by little, little by little makes it grow. Little by little is a principle. Everybody say principle. Say it again. They said, how are we going to drive all the inhabitants out of the, out of the, the, the promised land? That's what Joshua, that was the problem they had when they got to the edge. There's the Canaanites, the Anakites, the, the Philistines, all these other ites over here in the land. How are we going to get rid of them? The scripture says God told them, little by little, I'm going to give you the land. If I gave it all to you at once, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Oh, pastor, you ain't heard the news. My boyfriend, 21 years old, just went to the NFL and they gave him $40 million guaranteed a year. You just ruined his life. Because he don't know how to handle 40 million. But if he worked his tail off playing football and they paid him for the yards he got or the catches he made or the tackles he made. See, this is the problem with our sports today. Oh, I know the voice from here ain't going to change anything up there. We love our sports too much, but listen to me. When you're not initiative-minded, when there's not understanding of little by little in life, the game... I'm going to hit the slots. <laughs> come on, come on, Jesus. 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 Hey, you got a pen? I need to scratch off over here. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. When you don't get it, little by little, you don't appreciate it. When you get too much too quick... So one of our problems as parents, we love our kids so much, we give them so much so quick, they don't appreciate what they got. Little by little. Everybody say little by little. So he told Josh, we're going to drive them out little by little. Told Moses, we're going to drive them out little by little. You're going to start with uh, with Jericho and move to AI. You keep on moving. But you've got to keep the principles just little by little. When you're young, when you're young, you've got life little by little. You get your education, start your job, start, start investing, start doing things. Next thing you know, you'll be like HD. When you hit your 60s, you'll be over a millionaire. <laughs> Boy, I wish somebody had taught this to us when we were young, don't you? Amen. Proverbs 14.4. Don't go there. Proverbs 14.4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. In other words, you can have a clean house, you can clean, have a clean business, you can have a clean church. What I mean by that is sterile, but you ain't got no life in it. Where there's life, there's mess. There's problems. Where there's oxen, I'll be nice, there's poo. You may not like it, but that's increase. And if you got increase, you got finances. You know, I look around sometimes at our church and I say, I, is there mud on the floor? I know. I mean, we got people here. There's trash in the bathroom. I know. I mean, because we got people here. What they, 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 a cigarette box in the parking lot. I know. Because we got Baptists here. <laughs> strength. Strength. 
Amen. I got to keep moving here. Increase, increase is a reward for obedience. Skip on down. Skip on down. Uh, uh, get, all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Let me just stay there and tell you you'll be blessed in the field and blessed in the country. Amen. God going to bless you in the city if you obey him. Obe when I went to the principal's office, if he gave me a, set, a one or two, you either quit running in the hall or grab your ankles. I'll take number one. I'll do my bestest. <laughs> Quit running in the hall. But it's her fault. She wouldn't slow down. <laughs> Let me give you another simple, simple, simple. You want to change the world? It ain't about changing your apartment. If you want to change the world, follow one simple principle. John 13, 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one to another. Well, I love them if they're Catholic. I love them if they're Pentecostal. I love them if they're bad. No, no, no. If you have love one to another. If we can start love. I know, I know, I know. It's archaic. It's crazy. Jesus taught it. It ain't worked yet, Pastor. Yes, it has. It works every time it's applied. That if I start loving, if I start caring, if I start, well, they're they not my color. Who cares? You didn't ask what color you were going to be born. You didn't ask where you were going to be born. Yeah, you, you Texans. You think you all that because you've got to be born here. I'm a Texan. Texan. Listen. Good for you. But don't act like you had a choice. Don't act like you all that because you got to be born in Texas. I've been here 30-something years. I love this state. I wasn't born here. I got here as quick as I could, though. I ain't left when I got here. I love Texas. But I was raised and born in Alabama. Amen. And you know my roots are there, and I go back there, and I talk about it. But, look, I didn't ask my color. I didn't ask where I was going to be born. I got to live with it and quit acting like it made me better than anybody else. All right. That's really good preaching. That's another great sermon, another principle to learn about. <laughs> Increase. I got to go. Increase comes through synergy. That means together. How can we have increase? How can we grow as a church unless we come together? Unless two or three gather together. Colossians 2.19 2, says, And not holding the head from which all the body of joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Now, I'm not here to apologize for the word of God. But there are times you'll read it and you'll go, What did it say? Yeah. What did it say? It said there's a head, Jesus. There's a body, us. And we join together by bands and joints. We connected by bands. And this is a joint. It's an elbow. We call it elbow grease whenever it moves good. Natalia has trouble with some of our language. Well, you're from Russia. You wonder what is elbow grease. You wonder what is finer than frog hair. You wonder uh, what's, what's knee high to a grasshopper. Come on. <laughs> You wonder how, how life is so good when it's in high cotton. Come on. High cotton. Amen. We got all kind of little sayings around here that nobody else anywhere else understands. This is a joint here. It works. The yeah. bands pull it. The bands are pulling it. They're making it work. This up here was a band. A group of people banding together to lead worship to the joint. I know some of y'all were in joints last night. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Ligament, detached, bands, a joint for the uniting principle. The word synergy, working together, a combined action, synergism, the, the interaction of agencies. And they, when, when, our, when our swap ministry works with our ladies' ministry, which works with our children's ministry, all of a sudden, when somebody comes in and says, Pastor, we got to help Rhea and the kids get to Kentucky, all of a sudden you got this synergy working. When Dee creates a shirt to help them be able to raise money, you got synergy going on. You don't stand back and try to oppose that. You get in with it. Amen. You say, all right, we got this moment here. We need to work together. Amen. For the greater good of the house. This is what is missing in the White House. They're opposing instead of having synergy. This is what's wrong in the church house. And it's probably what's wrong in your house. No synergy. No connecting. No working together to make something good happen. 
Amen. Increase comes when we give with intent. When you give, don't be flippant. That's why I can't just throw money out at a street corner. I have to have intent. When I'm sowing seed, I've got to know why I'm sowing it. Amen. I've got to know where it's going. Corinthians 16, 1 says, Now about the collection for the Lord's people, do what I told you the Galatian churches do. On the first day of every week, each one should set aside intent it set aside a sum of money and keep it with your income, saying it, saving it up so that when I come, no collections have to be made. This was Paul's way of trying to help the churches understand. When you give, give with intent. Yeah. You know, have that money set aside according to your income. Of course, the Scripture teaches all through the book, amen, about the tithe. But watch this. A lot of people, they don't give till they hear the preacher preach and the band play. Well, let's see if Pastor Jerry can shuck the corn. That's another statement we use. <laughs> if he can shuck the corn this morning, I'll, I'll drop an extra five in. Hello. <laughs> Instead of giving with intent. Amen. God, I want to give that which you've blessed me with. Yeah. Listen to me. Prosperity is part of why we invest. But it's not the objective. The objective is to become a conduit wherewith currency flows. Do you, you understand? This is called currency. Currency. What is a current? A principal's office is a place where I learned the principles. Currency, this should never stay in my pocket. This has got to flow through me to other people. Yeah. If it doesn't flow, it's not currency. Amen. It's just paper. Yeah. Amen. It's seed that's sold. You've got to catch this. If you don't catch it, then you're never going to understand why God blessed you. Amen. And why he has blessed you. Proverbs 3, 9 says, Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your presses shall burst out with new wine. 1 Samuel 2, 30 says, Those who honor God, I will honor. But those who despise me, will I disdain. Giving is simply about honor. When I honor God, when I honor my mom and dad, when I honor my children, when I honor people, when I give to them, I'm honoring them. You never went before a king without a gift to honor him. We stand before King Jesus, and we've got to remind ourselves, we've got to honor him. Amen. Every now and then, you need to hear something that says, go to the principal's office. Amen. So I can remember the principles. So I can catch them. Stand with me. Increase comes when you're planted in the right garden. My place matters. Some of you started coming to this house, out at the other campus, you started connecting. Increase comes when we're planted in the right place. If I'm planted in the wrong place, I, I've been to Yuba City. I've preached in Yuba City. I've preached in Marysville, Chico, Sacramento. I've been all around that area. Reading, a priest in Reading. Uh, and in saying that, as beautiful as Northern California is, it's not my place. It's not, uh, 16 years, I've not looked for another place other than this place. Because I've always felt like I was planted here. That God put me here. He meant that there was a culture of people like me here. And let me say it again. There were people who liked me here. Quit trying to fit in where folk don't like you. Find where folk like you and watch how easy it is to grow. Is that right, Charlie? I remember meeting Charlie 20-something years ago, and I looked at her and I said, Dear Lord, that biker chick right there, she needs to find her place. Yeah. And she did, and she planted, and she's growing. When you find your place, amen, you're able to grow from there. Heads bowed, eyes closed. i got to close quickly. we got to get back to principle. we got to teach it to our kids, our kids' kids. we got to believe God for increase. I just want to get back to fishing. I just want to get back to doing the will of God in our lives. Dear God, help us. Help us. At least one of these principles, let us grab hold of it. Whether it be increase, whether it be work, drive the lazy from us. Remind us, Lord, we, don't, we can't quit till it's over. Remind us to keep plowing, to give time. When we put seed in the ground, to give it time. 
Our kids are not a waste. They're not over. God, our children, we've invested seed in them. Others have watered it. But you're going to bring forth the increase. God, you're going to bring forth the increase. If you've been away from God, throw your hand up right now. If you've been away from Him, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You've been away from God, throw your hand up. A couple of hands are already in the building, real fast. Thank you, man. Amen. Let's make this day solid. Pray it with me. Jesus, send me to the principal's office. Help me understand the power of the Word of God. I receive it today. I ask you to forgive me. Wash away my sins. Make me more like you. Heal my body. Touch my mind. Give my spirit the energy to carry forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. The second Sunday of August, we're baptizing. If you've not been baptized, you find a, a sign-up sheet back there. Make sure it gets to our office one way or another through David, Joseph, myself, any of our secretaries, any of our folk in the booth, that somebody going to get that to us, okay? Amen. Is that next week? Oh, that's next week. We want to baptize you next week. Sam wants to fill the trough back here. Amen. We want to get you back. If you had not been baptized, please sign up and let us know. Be seated for a brief moment. High-five somebody on your way down. You ain't got friends because you ain't been friendly. You ain't got friends because you ain't been friendly. You got to be friendly. Amen. The Bible says we'll be known as we're known. When you get to heaven, you're going to know the people that you're on this earth. Make enough friends that you can last for eternity. Yeah. Some of y'all ain't going to have enough friends to get you through a week. Amen. Make some friends while you're here. Yeah. Amen. Uh, as David is on his way, so see this morning. Give of your tithe, your offering. If you need an envelope, lift your hand. Sow with intent, with intent. Have an intention to sow. If you're giving by phone, just wave your phone. Say, I'm giving online. If you're watching this online, Mike Thies, I know you're watching us. Amen. Lucinda said, send extra money. <laughs> you know he's watching. He's in Ohio. I know he'd like to be at this car show on Friday. Amen. So get, if you know somebody with a, that loves gear, love gear, uh, bro, the, the, the finest of the fine. We're at that car show this Friday. The number one winners at the George R. Brown were at that car show. I'm telling you, man, I, was, I thought, I'm going to have to really polish my car to get it over here, clean it up. But it's at the Highway 99 and 59 is a Kroger's, brand new, in New Caney. Amen. Big car show there in the Kroger parking lot. Love to have you guys out on Friday. Amen. Fellowship this week with somebody. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, got to go. Uh, open today is Tayton's Food Pantry, um, as well as the clothing ministry. If you go out to the other campus, they will both be there. Um, today, August 4th, Lift Ladies with um, Bible Study. Um, if you see Miss Diane. Um, also, today is Family Bowling Day. Is there anything we need to know about that? Yes, ma'am. We're going to have a good time. It's always fun. We had a lot of fun last year and the year before. So uh, if you guys come out, that's at 130 at Max Bowl in Humble, right? All right. Uh, August 9th is their Speed Hot Rod Ministry. That's what Pastor was talking about. Meet them there in Valley Ranch in New Caney. August 11th is Swap Seniors with a Purpose. Next week, um, in August 16th through the 17th, is TLCC Ladies Conference. Um, she going to be in the bag. See her if you would like to hang out. Uh, it's, it's always good just a fellowship. Again, uh, sharpen, iron sharpens iron. Unless we get around each other, we can never sharpen each other. All we're going to do is just get duller, duller. You can't keep using a knife and expect to get sharper. Mm -hmm. You got to use a knife and then sharpen it. And then use a knife and then get sharpened. That's why we come here on Sundays. We get and sharpen. So continue to hang out. Meet with us. August 17th is Jewels for Christ. Um, meet in the Fellowship Hall, see Miss Diane Spurlock after service. Um, today we believe in God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, 
bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates in return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, success to the church.